An Abundance of Catherines is a young adult novel by John Green. Released in 2006, it was a finalist for the Michael L. Prince Award. The novel includes an appendix by Daniel Biss, a close friend of Green, that explains some of the more complex equations used by the main character, Colin Singleton. Colin Singleton, a child prodigy living in Chicago, fears he will not maintain his genius as an adult. Over the span of his life, Colin has dated 19 girls named Catherine, all spelled in that manner. After being dumped by his girlfriend, Catherine 19, Colin is longing to feel whole, and longing to matter. He hopes to become a genius by having a eureka moment. After graduating from high school, and before college, Colin's best and only friend, Hassan Harbish, convinces him to go on a road trip to take his mind off the breakup. Colin goes, hoping to find his eureka moment. After reaching a rural Tennessee town called Gutshot, they visit the supposed resting place of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. There, they meet Lindsay Lee Wells and her mother Hollis, whose family runs a local textile mill. Hollis allows Colin and Hassan to stay with her family and offers them a summer job interviewing the town's residents and assembling an oral history of Gutshot. Colin begins to like Lindsay, though he is foiled by her boyfriend, Colin Lyford, whose father is employed by Lindsay's mother, Hollis. Colin is still chasing his eureka moment, finally finding it in the theorem he created called the Theorem of Underlying Catherine Predictability. It determines the curve of any relationship based on several factors of the personalities of the two people in a relationship. His theorem eventually works for all but one of his past relationships with a Catherine, which the novel explores. While the backstories of Colin's life play out, Hassan finds a girlfriend, Katrina, a friend of Lindsay's. Their relationship is cut short when Colin and Hassan catch Katrina having sex with Lyford while on a feral hog hunt with Lindsay, her friends and Lyford's father. A fight between Lyford and all the surrounding acquaintances begins when Lindsay finds out that he has been cheating on her. Injured in the fight, Colin anagrams the Archduke's name while in the graveyard to dull the pain, and realizes that it is actually Lindsay's great-grandfather, named Fred N. Din Zanfar, who is buried in the tomb. Colin finds Lindsay at her secret hideout in a cave, where he tells her the story of every Catherine he has ever loved. Lindsay tells him how she does not feel sad but instead slightly relieved by Lyford's affair. They discuss what it means to them to matter and eventually confess their love for each other. As their relationship continues, Colin decides to use his theorem to determine whether he and Lindsay will last. The graph reveals that they will only last for four more days. Lindsay slips a note under his door, four days later, stating that she cannot be his girlfriend because she is in love with Hassan. But she leaves a PS stating that she is joking. Colin realizes that his theorem cannot predict the future of a relationship, it can only shed light on why a relationship failed. Despite this, Colin is content with not mattering. Hassan says that he is applying for two college classes, which Colin has been trying to convince him to do throughout the book. The story ends with the trio driving past the restaurant they were originally planning to go to, because Colin, Lindsay, and Hassan realize that they can just keep driving, there is nothing stopping them from continuing on. The novel is written in a third-person narrative. Green used third-person to create empathy for Colin. In a blog post, Green wrote that the novel needed to be written in third-person, because it's about a guy whose brain does not lend itself to narratives, and who struggles to tell stories in ways other people find interesting. The story includes many footnotes that become an essential part to understanding Colin's brain and how it works. Green says that the footnotes function as a kind of competing narrative that comments upon and, for lack of a better word, problematizes. The Central Narrative An Abundance of Catherines is a work of fiction that includes many mathematical terms and academic language. With the footnotes and the appendix that is at the end of the novel, Green gives his readers a way of attempting to achieve precision and clarity of the story in general, but more specifically, Poland's mind. The book consists of 19 chapters to highlight the number 19. These chapters include Colin's flashbacks, which are meant to reflect the relationship we have between chronological narrative and emotional narrative. This format is also known as a nonlinear narrative. An Abundance of Catherine's was a 2007 Michael L. Prince Award Honor book and received recognition as one of American Library Association's best books for young adults. John Green mentioned in Brotherhood 2. Zero, a video blog he created with his brother, on December 10, 2007, that rights had been bought to make his book into a movie. Green was asked to write the screenplay. On his website, it states that the project was abandoned, though a different production company currently has the rights with hope for the future. In an interview with Josh Horowitz in 2014, 
Breen stated that with the exception of Looking for Alaska, all of his books were in his control in regard to their film adaptation. Thanks for watching.